Hello, I'm Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to our series in retail uh, uh, merchandising. Today, we're going to be talking about customer buying habits. Okay, so uh, you'll, you already uh, uh, did the homework. You read the assignments from the publisher. You looked at the publisher's PowerPoint. Now, all I'm doing is doing a summarization of what we talked about uh, in our discussion board and what we uh, learning. I'm just going to go on real briefly. You have all the information. Now, remember, now print out my concept maps. You usually have the first uh, two tiers. Remember, if there's a plus, you add on to it. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about market segmentation, the point of purchase, uh, things, the point of uh, sales display, types of buying decisions. you got to know about the customers, buying processes. How does that customer think? Remember, you have to become that customer. Not how I, I mean, how I think gives me kind of an indication but now i have to see how other people that's also like empathy uh, how do they feel okay information how do they get their information that's what you got to know who your customers are evaluation of alternatives customers usually do that uh, uh, i got this how does it cost too much uh, let me look at it see if i got the a good uh, the value i needed purchasing the merchandise after i bought it oh did i do the right thing i'm always worried about that and it's only when it's up to a higher amount if it's anything over like about two hundred dollars three you go, oh, geez, uh, make the right decision. And sometimes you have to do approaches to segmenting the market segment. And then in the back of the author, he has the term, uh, key term. Remember, part of this class is learning new key uh, vocabulary and terminology. So let me just go real quickly. I'm going to try to keep this under 20 minutes, all right? Because the new market, the new customer base, our expa- a- 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 attention span is shorter. Look at the commercials and everything else on YouTube and everything else. Or on a lot of social media. Okay, uh, market segment. What do you have to understand market segment? What's retail market? How do I break up groups of segments into a buying class or a uh, selling uh, area, right? As a manufacturer, where do I go to? So if I'm looking at, uh, all I'm doing is grouping people. A group of customers are attracted to the same retail mix. They usually use the same platforms. They, uh, they uh, look at the same papers. They do, uh, uh, they're on the same social media. So I have to understand that. That's part of my research. Okay, criteria for evaluating uh, actionable. It doesn't make sense. Can I get it right away? Uh, uh, right? Identifiable. Could I identify that segment? Sometimes it's kind of hard. It's kind of like in the shadow. Depending on how active they are. Remember, sometimes you just want that little niche. You don't want everybody. You just want that little piece of the pie, the micro niche. I'm a small business. I'm a, a, a boutique. Maybe down the road I'm, I have a lot, but I'm starting right now. That's where I want you to start thinking, what's my little niche, okay? Sustainable. Could I, will it keep on customers grow? Will it come, come back? And reachable, could I uh, reach them, okay? Now, some of the social factors, uh, now I'll just do this with a chart. Your consumers, I don't care how old you are or what, what, what generation you are, you have a reference group. When I'm in business, I get to do this uh, suit and tie. When I'm academic, I can have my shirt a little bit loose. I can uh, mix my color, right? But that's a reference group. What's acceptable? My clientele, when I'm dealing with larger customers, what's acceptable? When I'm working with smaller clientele, shirt and tie, too darn softy. I got uh, like, uh, I got to kind of be a little more uh, relaxed. Tie goes off. Uh, uh, that's why I usually get uh, shirts that have buttons because then if I don't have the tie, still, I still look good, Okay. I'm a fashion, I'm teaching mostly to fashion people, just having fun. Family's a reference point. Sometimes family's a re- reference point because that's our foundation. Where we come back for what we like or what you like or not subconsciously, we get that. And culture, where you grew up with. If I grew up down south, I have a different reference group. If I grew up in Chicago, my reference group is a little different compared to somebody that has maybe uh, someplace in, in, in the belt uh, uh, area, maybe a little more conservative, okay? Economy. The economy here is a lot different than the economy in Wisconsin or someplace else. So, and, and not only in the state, you have to look when you open up. The economy in Barrington it's a lot different than the economy in Wheeling. And we're in the same state. But you have to understand, where's my store at? Is it in Wheeling? What's the customer? Is it there in uh, Barrington? Or uh, uh, or uh, I'm in Illinois. Those are because uh, I'm on YouTube and blogging. Uh, just so you know, okay? All right. Now, family references. I'm not going to go into it. It just basically uh, talks. Read the material. I don't have to go through this. 
think about it. Your family, their influence and reference groups, the culture. Okay, now the point of uh, uh, purchase and point of uh, uh, display. When I look at the point of purchase, when I put on a computer and they scan it and everything else, the reason they have to have, if it's not the same item, a different color, because it does part of the inventory control when you look at uh, further. They know how to order stuff. So when they know so much of stuff gone, it's not like somebody checking. The system says, hey, we're at only 20%. Uh, we sold 20%. Uh, we only got 20% left. We got 80% we sold. Good. We better replenish this information. Now, it's going to take some time. Now, some of them are going to find out on ordering, maybe doing it automatically. Because now the system, oh, we're down. And the vendor gets that information. And I have an open uh, purchase ticket. Look, I'm using concepts. I'm using uh, terminology so you understand the retail business. Okay? And then the points of uh, uh, displays. If I look, I think I got a picture here, right? Look, whenever you go into the bakery, you come up here, to, you can smell this. Even uh, you know, if I look at Subway sandwiches, they got their cookie, but those are really fake cookies. Uh, you know, the heart like a rock, is, but they look uh, 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 delicious. It's just a point. It's, oh, look, I had the cookie. Oh, yeah, they're in the back there. All right? Okay, types of buying decisions. Now, when I'm looking at buying decisions and everything else, I'm looking at different types of buying, extended problem solving. When I'm making a decision, Either I don't want to eat out, I don't want to go out, I don't want to do something, I want to have somebody else to do it. So I got a problem, I got a situation. Is this financial risk? Should I do it? How much is it going to cost me? The physical risk. I'm getting older, do I want to climb? What do I want to do? Social risk. What's society going to think of that if I do that? All right, now there's more to it. I'm just giving you a general idea. I try to bring this into everyday language. The author and everything else to give it at the next level, where you're at the college level and you're taking me for a course, so you understand. But when you're talking to individuals, when you want to understand, you got to have the basic. When I'm teaching someone English, English second language for me, this is a microphone, this is a microphone, mic, 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 mic. And then I put sentences and everything else together. So you're starting off slowly. Okay, limited problem solving. When I look at limited problems, some prior experience, so I impulse buying, on uh, uh, planned purchasing, that's all set up when you had to register. You got to wait. Now I got to wait longer. So now I got six feet because of COVID. Remember, it used to be when you come in there, you could go right. Now you come in there, you just right away because you got all the screen. So you have to adjust your layout of the store. So I got six feet, so I got to bring it out a little bit so people could say, oh, I'm waiting. Oh, here's a magazine. I can buy. Do you see me? So you have to change. Unless you think, you know, it's going to go away. So you have to do it where it's flexible. You can bring it in, bring it out, depending on what's going on. You have to be flexible. As a small boutique, what makes you unique is you're one of a kind and you're flexible and you're very receptive to the customer or your client, okay? Habitual uh, decision-making, brand loyalty, realtor. You know, when you start it off, at, look, I go to some places, even though it costs a little bit more, I like the owner. I like their product. He talks to me. Joe, I haven't seen you for a while. I sometimes feel guilty to go there if I haven't seen him for a while. Okay, so buying process. Here's the chart. When I look at the buying, you have to have a need. As a business, I'm there to solve a problem. Your problem, you have a need. I will resolve it for a price. We have a negotiating. When you look at the supply and demand, boo, and that's what we call the market price. We'll get that later on. That's showing the information. I start searching information. If it's over certain I do the web. Get searched. Even on Amazon, compare. Boo, and, all right. Uh, uh, Evaluation alternatives. I look at different stores, everything else, which is better, uh, how close they are, what's the shipping, if I got to return it, all that. Purchasing, uh, purchase the merchandise or service, and then post purchase. Cognitive dissonance. After, look at it this way: if you get decide to get married or have someone to bring, uh, you move in with, uh, move in with you to split the cost. Okay, a good idea. After the first week, and you see, oh, they're sloppy, they don't pay on time, what did I do? And then later on you realize, hey, they've got some faults, but they're not that bad. They're a good companion, and they do a lot of other stuff, they want to cook, so I could over the... But that first thing is on there, you're not sure. So in marketing, you really supply, you say, hey, you know, 75% of the customers that bought this product are very satisfied. So now I thought, oh, I must be in you know, 75%, or whatever, 90%. Look at it, okay? Okay, so let's go on need recognition. 
uh, unsatisfied needs, types of needs we have, uh, uh, utilitarian, uh, idyllic. Uh, okay, now this one here is uh, satisfies accomplish a task. I need to something is everyone has done. This one here said a purchase need for entertainment, emotional, recreational. A lot of this right now because of COVID, we're locked up. We're, uh, we're, uh, I mean, we're still spending, but it's uh, everything's changed. So if you look at the purchasing model compared to when this was written, it did a flip side. But you could have to make adjustments in certain areas, and then when it comes back, you could flip it back and make sure, don't keep the old model, you find out what the customers want. Some customers may like this uh, delivery and stuff, and may, hey, I'll, I'll just stick with it. So your thing is how I'm going to get them back, okay? Okay, now uh, how retail satisfied it, and then conflicting needs. You know, example, customers trade off up and down. I don't want to go into too much detail because that's where you have to take me for the course. Come on, we go into our discussion board to go a little bit. Okay, how do you get information? Internal. I ask friends and everything else, peer questions that you have over here. External. I go outside my social media. I look what's trending and everything else. Information search. I just go Google dots. I search a different platform and put the information, see what comes up. Once I see it, I read it, and then I can fine-tune my information. If you don't know what you're looking for, and mostly the customers don't, they will find some generic thing out there and see what they have, and I start fine-tuning it. Sometimes the system helps you. People that look for this also purchase this. You see how the system, AI, artificial intelligence, is assisting you to purchase. The whole thing is to purchase you. When you're in the store, your sales individuals, the people, they basically could get you to talk. Hey, I don't take you like time, whatever. Online, you have to have AI giving you this little suggestion. Open up, just oh, click on this. Or, all of a sudden, I click on stuff, I get all these darn ads. I don't want to, you know, just a way to get rid of them. Eh, I kind of like it because it's marketing. I see how annoying it could be. So now you have to be, don't be annoying. Remember, exposure and repetition is the biggest thing in advertising. Okay, so uh, evaluation alternative. You look at different models. You know, this one here is look at a customer product and predict the customer evaluation. We talked about Amazon does it. Uh, different uh, stores selling uh, groceries in different ways. I'm not going to go into that because it's uh, it, we really discussed that in our discussion. But purchasing of uh, the product, if not, we will. Your know, customer not always purchase with brand with the highest evaluation. Some brands, you know, you know, ver verified. But I just don't like something about it. The brand may be good, but I just may not like. We talked uh, in, uh, in some of our other things of social responsibility. I may not. Uh, uh, they are uh, conservative. They're liberal. They're libertarian. I mean the business that's what they come across and I don't like that type of a thing or I don't like uh, who they uh, give to or, or, or whatever you know what I mean so there's a lot of different factors that you have to look at it you know, just because of the brand is expensive I might have some bad issues with it or I heard something in my uh, or uh, with my uh, influence or reference group ways to increase the purchase now the ways to increase the purchase make it easy to purchase you know, buy it right now. Uh, provide sufficient information and that reinforces the evaluation. Reduce the risk. Uh, uh, reduce the risk of making a purchase mistake. Create a sense of urgency. Sale only today. Ends in two, two days. Buy now. Buy one. Get one free. Oh, I buy it. I don't need. I only need one. I, I got two, and I never use the second one. So you bought something you didn't need at a higher price because. You could have got it cheaper if you uh, we got to uh, 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 wait a little bit. Okay, satisfaction, post consumption evaluation. You know, it didn't meet my needs or anything else, or I'm not sure it didn't meet my needs. Remember, sales is a way of embellishing and enhancing my product. But sometimes that embellishing and enhancing is a facade. It's just an image, and reality has no substance. Okay? And you have people like that, very outgoing and everything else. When you talk to them, they have no substance. Some people like people like that. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm selling to people that have no substance, shoot, they buy anything else that makes them feel good. So with that, look, I'm, look, this is a marketing class. This is a retail. How do I get my customers? How do I know? If I know that's what they want, I build them up. That's what they want. That's what they want to hear. I let them hear. I make them sure I have mirrors all over so that they could get that instant gratification. Okay, so you got geographic, demographic, demographic, age, income, everything else. It doesn't tell me much. It just tells me they can afford my product. Here's the individual I'm looking for. Here's something about them. They got high school, college, or oh, whatever, okay? And then it has to be segment uh, on that and a lifestyle. You look at that. 
and this one here, if you look at this, okay, so if I'm looking at different segment rating and closing, it wasn't too, uh, it was a very interesting read, look at it. Remember, I don't want to throw off too much information, for most of you, this is an intro class, so just something out there, okay, different lines. What I really am interested in, a small business owner, is right in here. Lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle? Because you want to be a trendy. You're the trendy person. You want to be the one of a kind person. That's what I want to hit. This psychographic. What really makes you think the inside of you? I like this. I like country. I like uh, uh, heavy rock. I just like uh, classical music. I, whatever. You know, I'm just throwing stuff out there. I may like bright colors. I may like uh, 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 neutral colors. Okay. And the different segments uh, and the different vowels, values and the different uh, 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 segment uh, uh, chart. You had that all in there. And the rest of the key terms. Okay, I think I did this under 10 minutes. Let me just bring it back down, expand, and to level one. All right, so this is everything we covered in a nutshell. Remember, uh, if I'm looking, you have to know the customer's buying habit. Now, some of you, if you're going to go into organization, at a lot of the schools, uh, the two schools I teach at, they have organizational behavior. That's a good course if you're going to HR. It's also a good course when you go into sales. I sometimes want to sell to companies, medium and large. I have, They have a culture. They have a buying habit. A little different than consumers, but they're still people. They buy differently. So it depends who your market is. Right now, I'm just going to a regular uh, individual. If I'm starting to go into a lot of uh, larger companies, I have to understand their segment. Who's their uh, buyers? I have to understand how they make decisions. Their decisions ain't instantly. They goes into uh, uh, if I get another meeting to do my presentation, they have to go to uh, a, a buying chain or a, a, a certain next level that authorizes it. They look at it and before it goes through. So you go through different things. It takes you maybe a longer process, but once you get them, it's a larger account. But right now, a lot of us working the little ones. Okay, information. If you know your target market is doing on the mobile apps or doing Instagram, wherever they're getting the information, that's where I want to put my hands on. A lot of people say, go YouTube. YouTube's dying. <laughs> Too conservative. Yeah, I'm trying to get the younger people. Do you want to be on the edge? Do you want to cuss? And my grandson playing the, uh, 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 what do you call it, watching uh, 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 on YouTube because he wants to be a gamer. Okay, he's in uh, fifth grade or something. All right. The cussing. I said, well, oh, no, all gamers cuss. There's one or two that doesn't cuss. Are they good? Yeah, but they don't cuss. Most of them cuss. That's just a... so. So he's already put, uh, put, uh, picking up on that. So he already knows how he has to present the information. I'm not saying you have to cuss or swear, but understand that's the market. So I'm trying to get the younger, trendy one. They want to use some of that. Other things will, will knock off the platform on that. Okay? And then, uh, let's see, what else do I have? I'm going to close it. Purchasing merchandise or services. Remember, once you purchase... Merchandise product, I could touch it. I could feel it. I know this camera oh, solid, looks like a good. Maybe solid, but nothing inside. <laughs> I do take them apart and look at them. They, uh, look at the equipment. So, if I'm looking at Now, services. Services I don't touch. It's my impact. Service is a word. The la how I evaluate services is the last time I was serviced. If the person cut my hair wrong or put the wrong dye or did something wrong, I have that already. All those 10 years of good service went down like that. Maybe some people will come back. Some people say, okay, maybe it's a one-time fluke. If it happens again, you start to have a pattern. I start looking for a compet uh, competitor. You as a new business are always trying to find that weak spot of your competition that has that solid bait. If I could just chip away one here, one here. Ooh, didn't like this. I don't like this. I still have the core that he or that the business organization has, but I'm chipping away. And that's how I do with the market segmentation. All right? So I think I have everything done again. I, again, I'm Dr. George Machaki. Let me see recording. I'm in 18 minutes. I'm good. I got two more minutes to sp uh, spare. I think the next chapter or lesson we have is retail marketing strategy. Again, remember, this is just a basic in introduction in retail uh, uh, merchandising. If I open up a small store or stop, a boutique, or if you're a buyer and selling, you have to have a general idea of understanding business people. Again, I'm Dr. George Machaki, and I'll see you in the next uh, broadcast. Bye.